On October 29th, a patrol of the Russian military police came under a mortar fire near the border village of Darbasiya. The village is located just east of the Turkish-controlled town of Ras Al Ain. The Russians were there to discuss with their Turkish counterparts the start of joint border patrols, which had been agreed in the framework of the Russia-Turkey de-escalation zone deal on northeastern Syria. Initial reports suggested that at least two Russian military personnel were injured in the attack. However, later they were denied. Turkish-backed forces claimed that they did not fire at the Russians and pointed out that the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces may be interested in such an incident. On October 28th, Russian and Turkish military officials met in Ankara to discuss the implementation of the de-escalation zone agreement lay down a plan for further joint actions in the region. Units of the Syrian army continued deployment along the Turkish border in a 90-kilometer wide area from the eastern countryside of Ras Al Ain to the city of Al Kimishli in northeastern Syria. According to Syria's Sana, government forces entered at least 20 settlements in the area. The Syrian army is currently working to reinforce its positions along the entire border area west and east of Turkey's Operation Peace Spring on the eastern bank of the Euphrates. On October 28th, Syria and Russia opened a floating bridge linking the two banks of the Euphrates River in the province of Deir Ezzor. The bridge links the towns of al Mareye and Marat. It was constructed thanks to assistance from and under protection of Russian forces. Deir Ezzor Governor Abdul Majid al Kawakibi said that the bridge was constructed in response to the needs and demands of the people in the governorate, northern countryside. The bridge will allow them to communicate with the rest of the governorate areas. Earlier, the U.S.-led coalition destroyed all the bridges in the area. A part of them was destroyed in the framework of the coalition's campaign against ISIS. Later, the destruction of the infrastructure was a tool of cutting off links between people in the U.S.-controlled and government-controlled areas. On October 28, the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper, once again warned that the U.S. is not going to abandon oil fields in the eastern bank of the river. According to him, the U.S. will respond with overwhelming force to any group that would threaten the safety of U.S. forces there.